That's the problem with critters. They always let you down. You ask for a simple mass carnage, and what do you get? Two lousy corpses. Oh, well. Look on the orange side. It's still Halloween, and the night is young. Now, do you know that high-rise condo downtown? It's very 80s. There's a girl living there named Carol Ann, and she's got a lot of admirers, namely an old hint with a lousy tailor. The problem is, one, he's a little too old for her, and two, he's a little too dead. I am talking about a guy who will do anything to get little Carol Ann, including murder. But I do admire Yankee determination, don't you? That old man is going to send me more customers. And hey, someone's got to pay for all the formaldehyde around here, which means I better get back to work. Are you ready? Open wide and say... A Halloween to Die For continues with Poltergeist 3, next on the Superstation. Going down, furniture, cordless appliances, lingerie, a stiff slab of marble. Poor Dr. Seaton. He really got the shaft. Now, I know it's impious to make fun of the dead, but I have to keep my spirits elevated. After all, tomorrow is the day of the dead. Now, the good doctor here found out that poltergeists are not just dibbics with massive mood swings. They want Carol Ann bad. Everybody in this movie wants Carol Ann bad. Carol Ann! 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 I just wish that one of them would catch Carol Ann so they would all shut up. <gasps> oh, I just felt Carol Ann go through me. Cross over, children. All welcome. All welcome. A Halloween to die for. We'll be right back on the Superstation. <laughs> 